Hello everyone, my name is Oskar Lagrosen and I am the founder of The Total Living. The Total Living is an online education startup that provides you with the best and simplest practices, tools and frameworks to dramatically improve focus, productivity and your results, while at the same time have a calm and anxiety-free life. Since last week, I have published a new article every single day on the totalliving.com, which you can see right here, the website name. However, if you're like me and uh, most people, you have way more opportunities to listen and watch rather than read. So therefore, I will publish a new video and podcast episode every day too. For now, each video and episode will contain of me reading up today's blog post. Think of it as some kind of audio book, mini audio book version of them that you can listen to whenever you're cleaning, dishwashing, running, walking, relaxing, etc. If you prefer to watch it too, you can use YouTube as well, watching me um, covering all this concept with some pictures. And uh, if I feel like it, I will do some small comments to what I've written on the site. So uh, it's a little bit exclusive for you. Now, I would like to read my very first blog post, which I published almost three weeks before publishing every single day. It's a pretty long one, but I will explain it. I will explain in the post the value of speeding up audio. So feel free to speed up my voice from whenever you hear me. As an aside, this is actually what I do. So I would encourage you to do that as well if you feel that I go too slow sometimes. But anyway, here is the article, how to consume over 30 books a month with 365 books a year. From the time we entered elementary school to where we are now, we have been exposed to the art of reading, from learning the first sounds to forming sentences and arguments. In our modern culture, reading has become the sacred cow to success with all its positive attributes. Reading is often referred to as a meta habit to everything else and the gateway to knowledge. If reading is a fully formed habit practiced daily, you can learn everything you want to know. You can absorb all the life experience, research, and expertise the author has contributed during his or her career in just one book. So the bottom line is that reading exposes you to more useful information that is necessary to keep up in this society. And also there is no coincidence that society subconsciously pressures us to read more to call ourselves knowledgeable and informed citizens. So why are we not reading more often? According to a recent study, which I link in the post, Americans aged 20 to 34 spend only seven minutes reading on average. And um, it's actually a pretty low number considering the benefits that I mentioned before. And you might ask, why is that the case? Because they could be excuses like, I don't have the time, I'm too busy, or I'm not interested in book in general, or even like, I'm too slow, I don't think I'm a good reader, so why should I even try, etc., etc. But in this blog post, I'll show you how you can find the time, read as efficiently as possible, and enjoy the process. In today's world, where five to six books a month is considered a staggering number, according to some people, particularly the fast readers. I will show you how you can increase it fivefold to 30 and make reading a daily part of your life. So you might ask, what is a book really? Because although we, are, we have 400 pieces of paper within two covers and binders, and it might look decorative and stylish, I don't think we should limit ourselves to the classic definition because... There are three different kinds of books existing today, thanks to modern technology. And we have the first one, the physical books, 
which is kind of like the OG variant from centuries ago, which still is sticking around. And then we have the eBooks, which are popular by Amazon Kindle, but exist on other platforms too. So it's basically a computer file with uh, pages resembling a real book, but you can access it on your computer, your phone, your tablet, or even a real Kindle. Then we have the audiobooks. And it's an audio file in which a person, right now it's me, is reading out loud the book to you, or rather the article. Because remember the time when your mom and dad used to read you before bed back in the days? And you can now receive the same kind of luxury in today's age by not needing to look at a single word. And instead, you can do whatever chores you need to do anyway, such as like cooking, dishes, cleaning, running, weightlifting, walking, driving, if you, you're safe, of course, and gardening, etc. And uh, you can use your phone and headphones and speakers to enjoy this kind of book. Or in some cases, you can also listen and read at the same time, if you prefer that. And although all three types of books have their own pros and cons from stylish, as with physical books, to pure convenience, as the remaining alternatives, I strongly argue that you should optimize for convenience. In other words, focus on audiobooks and ebooks. Sure, physical books have their own charm, but and not another screen, but if you want to get through 365 books a year without being a full-time reader, because not everyone <laughs> gets to be a full-time reader, the ease of reading must be highly prioritized. And remember back in school when you have to read every word out loud. And if you missed one word, you were penalized for being a bad reader. It might have helped in the early stages, but... This has unfortunately led to the common conviction that reading a book means painstakingly processing every single word from the forward to the index, and you have to let go of that. The reason why you're reading this book after all is to receive the information and the big ideas. So you got this book because you were interested in what it could offer. So why pay attention to all the other fluff that is not really tied to what you wanted in the first place. And also there are some keywords, for instance, like substance, sorry, nouns or adjectives or other kinds of more relevant words that are more useful in order to understand the complete grasp of a particular paragraph. And also in some circumstances, only the first and last sentences in the paragraphs are enough to read if you got the information properly. You might also be more interested in some chapters and in all the others. And that is perfectly fine because the book ought to serve you, not the other way around. If some text is not important for you, use your valuable time and intuition to just drop it. And this is also why book summaries exist, by the way, and are highly popular with services like Blinkist and even on YouTube. I've seen a lot of those. These summaries, these summaries rather, are highly recommended if you want to just briefly skim the book before giving it more attention. And in the case of audiobooks, the same phenomenon is also applied because not every word which I'm saying right here is that important, although I would <laughs> like it to be otherwise, but that, that, that's actually reality. Only some keywords are more uh, insightful for, um, for you. And also the knowledge of using this book to fish for the useful ideas that has brought two different concepts, which I cover in this article. And th these are speed reading and speed listening. We can define speed reading as the rate of useful information consumed. But it's quite hard to quantify. I mean, what's really useful? It's at the end of the day, it comes down to like the subjective judgment. And at the end of the day, what matters is how fast you complete a book with the feeling that you got everything you wanted when getting the book. And uh, it's also perfectly normal to consume the book again because 
you're in a different stage of life and will notice other patterns and things and stuff like that. So uh, as an example here, I don't write this in article, but I'll say it to you. Um, one of my most influential books was a book called Ready for Anything by uh, David Allen. And I probably listened to it. It was an audiobook like 10 times during various different stages because every time I go back to this book, I feel like I got new perspective and new interpretation of what has happened. And I always discover something else every time. So I want to say that you don't need to grasp everything. And in fact, you can't because it's like you're going to develop as well as a person and the book will serve you. And back to speed reading, because if you're going to do that, there are two things, two things to keep in mind. First, you have to turn off your inner monologue and look at multiple words at the same time, because you can't just like still sub vocalize, for instance, like I need to do that because you, you cannot, if you want to read fast, think that sentence, because that's kind of slow anyways, because you have a fantastic ability with your eyes to just chunk many words at once. Merely looking at the text as you were looking at the picture without reciting them in your head. Because that will make the process much faster. Just look at them and grab some keywords and grab some understanding and stuff like that. The other thing is jumping to the next paragraph as soon as you intuitively feel that you have got everything you need. You want to think of this like an urge or a feeling rather than something you consciously think. I mean, in the beginning, you're, of course, allowed to think more like, have I received what I wanted? Do I understand this? With the goal of having this dialogue solely on a subconscious level. And I can also give some advice for experience. Like when you feel like you just automatically just think that, oh, this is so important. I mean, it's like your own hand or whatever you're using are um, kind of like doing its own, its own thing. It's like, you don't even think of it, but you just mark it like whenever. And that's really the, that's really the case with the intuition. It's like it, the body is like acting before you <laughs> in certain sense. And uh, I'll come back to it in future blog posts. And with these points combined, you will find yourself scrolling and turning pages relatively fast and steady, easing through the entire book. Of course, this takes practice, so don't expect to achieve this right initially if you're not already a fast reader. But be assured, however, that you will become much better over time. For speed listening, all audio players and videos such as YouTube and Vimeo can play tracks to at least 2x speed. Many apps like Audible and Spotify can up to play up to 3.5x 3, 3 x speed. And some like Storytel can even play up to 5x speed. And I, I didn't write it in the article, but I later found out I got recommended by a, by a friend. Um, um, what could you say? Um, it's like an add-on to YouTube that's called Enhance YouTube. Because normally... YouTube only allows you to um, listen up to um, 2x speed. But with this add-on, you can, <laughs> you can crank up the speed up to 16 speed. I know, it's ridiculous. 16 speed. But here we go. If you want to just breeze through the entire thing, that's, uh, that's entirely possible. So that's kind of like elite level. And uh, I, I would recommend like the 60 speed only if you have like, you know, captions and you're already a fast reader and stuff like that. But uh, practice makes perfect. So I just wanted to throw it out there. And the benefit of speeding it up is you dramatically cut the length of the entire book. Plus the benefit that the, the narrator sounds more alert and not right now like a sleepy and stuff like that and take for instance like a standard eight hour audiobook and if you just crank up the speed a little bit to 1.5 you're already down to six hours 
And with 2x speed, it takes only four hours. And if you can listen to 3.5x speed, you can consume the same eight hour audiobooks in only two hours and 17 minutes. So that's, that's a lot in terms of like the reduction. But I know you're thinking like, how can I understand everything the narrator is saying if sped up? I mean, how can I comprehend the single word if it's just like babbling like uncomprehensively? But I will say the answer is once again, practice. Because just as you would not expect to run a marathon if it's just 20 minutes of jogging, you have to train yourself to get used to faster and faster speeds. Remember that every word is not valuable and you can have the same mindset as speed reading. Focus on the sentences and not the words. If there's an important passage, you can always slow down and then speed up. So far, we have also not addressed that some books are more enjoyed in the act of reading, such as like well-written fiction. I mean, would you really like to make the process more fast than what is intended? But the thing is, it's, it's up to you. I mean, these are like different tools that you can use, but you don't necessarily need to use them. But if you want to, you can use them. And um, you can also be a little bit slower in terms of the fiction ones. So then the question comes, what is actually good to read? And the answer is simple, but straightforward. Anything that catches your interest and curiosity. So aside from assigned reading in school or research, you should be totally free to pursue your own interest. Remember that books are one of the best, if not the best ways to become better at what you want to know more about. And uh, if you do not have a specific title in mind, browse the bestsellers, pick one, and from that book, move over to other similar ones. Just always remember that books ought to ensure your success and enjoyment. In terms of physical books, standard or online bookstores or libraries are still the way to go. For ebooks, the standard is Amazon Kindle, but there are also subscription services like Kindle Unlimited, Bookmate, or Scribd. I personally use Scribd. And I also strongly recommend using one of these subscription services since selection is quite large and you want as many books as possible for one set price. For accessing audiobooks, the standard is Audible, where you also pay per book or get one free each month if you subscribe. And similar services are audiobooks.com. But there are also, once again, excellent subscription services like Bookmate and Scribd above, which I use, Scribd, but also Storytel and Bookbeat. Storytel I used before. And you want to optimize for selection here. When is actually the good time to read books? I mean, audiobooks are very convenient since you can listen to them anytime, everywhere. As long as you're not like talking to someone or reading something else, listening to something else or sleeping. And it's actually possible to listen to audiobooks during your entire waking hours. And, but in reality, um, audiobooks shine the most when listening in dispersed snippets in your day. Listen to them as a backdrop for shores and travels or whenever you need to move, basically. Reading ebooks requires However, focused attention cannot be done whenever. The best use of ebooks that I've found is reading them as a default activity on your phone. Instead of too much social media or video games, you can make e reading easy and convenient. Now you actually have something to do while on the phone that is in line with your reading goals, and that's actually quite huge. And physical books can be used the same way as ebooks, but they require like a physical book. That's really the thing. And what separates the physical books are the lack of screens, which can be a nice alternative if you find that too much screens are kind of going against the broader purpose of health and stuff like that. And if you read in the late evening before bed, physical books or Kindle, that matter, are preferred to avoid the light. 
But the key takeaway is to use all of these three kinds of books on the same day if you can. And this means having one audiobook and one ebook slash physical books in parallel. Read the ebook on your phone and listen to the audiobook while you're in motion. And I also outlined three case examples, three different avatars, how this integrated form of reading looks in practice. So as an example, we got Tim, which is a university student who enjoys reading as well as sports and parties. And then when he wakes up and makes breakfast, he listens to his current audiobook at 2.5x two, speed. After saying goodbye to his girlfriend, Tim studies for two hours, quite in focus. Then he enjoys a quick jog with a heavy lunch or while listening to the same audiobook. He prefers to take it slow after lunch with some reading on his phone. Tim then spends one hour extra for study before he joins his buddies in a tennis match. While commuting to the hall, he picks up where he left off on the audiobook. After the match, he enjoys dinner and fun with his friends the rest of his evening. And whenever they are just looking at uh, their phones, he can just resume his progress on the ebook. Sarah, on the other hand, is a business executive, wife, and mother of two small children who believe that knowledge is crucial today. She manages to listen to her audiobook at 2.5x speed on the way between kindergarten and work and between meetings with stakeholders and large customers. And like Tim, Sarah also enjoys reading on her tablet after lunch for some minutes. In the evening, Sarah listens to her audiobook while cooking dinner, but can always pause and resume whenever one of her kids needs attention. She also enjoys reading classics on physical books after the kids have gone to sleep. Then we got Extreme Eric, because he just received his MBA with his first entry position starting in one month. And uh, he's quite nervous about this. So he decides to give all of his time and energy to books and learning to prepare for the job. So in one week, when he's completely alone, he listens to audiobooks at 3.5x speed almost the entire day while alternating between hiking, eating, and resting. Eric takes some breaks from his headphones to read on his, read on his full screen monitor, clicking through each page clicking through each page, rather, at a fast pace. And while it's extremely intense, he also takes some time to call up some of his distance friends to share what we have learned in order to discuss some concept to solidify them more. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? Is it worth it uh, cramming every single minute to books? And I would say that the value of the books comes down to the own usage and applications of their ideas. Therefore, there could be periods in your life when you're reading more, like extreme areas. And you could also be periods in your life when you're reading less. It all depends on your interest and curiosity. Nevertheless, with your speed reading slash speed listening capabilities, you have the freedom to go fast or slow, depending on your wishes and demands. Your work will also be of very high quality and wisdom. In the next blog post, we will look deeper into a system that's called One Glance. And if you like this video and this episode, I found this insightful, please share it with your friends via social media or other means. And with that, I want to say thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very great day.